Good evening everybody, welcome to Making It Monday. A very nice sedate start to a Monday evening. Um, and I think, hopefully, you can see the little Christmas tree decoration we're going to make this evening. Um, hi to Gemma and Jackie and Kath, welcome. And uh, it's just so lovely to see everybody. It's always an absolute treat to be here on a, on a Monday evening. Hi Abby, hi Caroline. And Lynn and Karen, Sandra, Bridget and Rachel, Mary. Uh, just lo so lovely to be here. And um, we're going to make Making It Monday 49, <laughs> which is our all puffed up Christmas tree decoration. And uh, she's gorgeous. I say she, it's a he, it's a knit. And I don't know if you can hear that. It's got a little tinkly bell on the bottom. And I suppose when I was making it, I thought it could be a bell as well. I suppose it depends on the colours that you might use and things like that. But there's the bell. It's, it's a medium sized bell, about half an inch across. But you know what, I've got, I've got a big bell, I've got a mini bell, I've got a, the medium sized bell. So we can have a look at uh, all of those. Ah, so there we are. So it's a nice, quiet, sedate start <laughs> to making it Monday. I thought it'd be interesting just to see it from a different angle and of course we've got all our little Christmas tree decorations uh, to to uh, complement the backdrop. So welcome to my workroom once again. Let me pop this on the tree. I'm gonna have to pop, pop it away so I can get my machine out and uh, there we go, pop it over there. You probably just see the top of the tree, can't you? Let's put it there. So welcome to Making It Monday. It's just a, such a treat, as I said just a minute ago, to be here. It's always lovely. It's always great to come up with a, a new pattern for you, something that we've uh, we've uh, developed ourselves. Either it's me, which it is this week, or it could be Kath, it could be Gemma, it could be Nicola. Nicola's going to be working very hard making one. I've seen it already, it looks fantastic. And uh, I wanted to do a quick, quick, just a quick overview of the Christmas makes that we've had because one of the things that um, you all wanted over the last few weeks was more Christmassy things. So the first one we had was the Christmas, um, Christmas pudding mat or it could be a table mat. We know we've got the two different sizes of patterns of applique from Adrienne um, to make the, the Christmas pudding mat. And it, it, or it could be a large coaster, it's up to you. But the applique is there for you to use and I think it is fabulous. And it's got a lovely easy envelope back to it, so dead easy to make. And then we had the all wrapped up Christmas um, gift wrapping. I'm sorry if you can hear my dog every night at this time she barks. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> so this is all wrapped up and this was the, the, um, the, the parcel bag, if you like, that we made a couple of weeks ago, um, decorated with a ribbon. So it looks like a parcel when you pop it under the tree. It's actually quite a big bag and it's um, from one fat quarter uh, with French seams. So if you've never done that before, take a look at that and uh, perhaps you want to make one of those. And then last week we had Gemma's um, design, which was the Christmas tree um, cutlery holder. Um, and that's the one I made last week. Um, and it's been beautiful. And quite honestly, I've seen loads on the Facebook page now of people have made these. They've made multiples of these as well. So obviously Gemma, that was a very, very useful pattern. Um, so yeah, so that's week three. I'm sorry about the barking, if you can hear. Week four, of course, is our fabulous all puffed up. I'll just retrieve it from the tree if it's going to let me. That's it. Um, and it's our little um, puffy tree decoration with a little bell on the bottom and it's so easy to make. So we're going to make one right from the scratch so you can see what I do. <laughs> I might have to go and close the door. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so dead easy to make. Um, if you're a little bit, if you have problems with your hands, um, I would suggest that actually it's easier to use a sewing machine rather than hand stitch all the way around. The only trouble you might have is with tying the knot. So you can either get somebody to help you with that or you could gather it up, get a bit of glue 
um, glue those threads together or glue those threads in place put a quilting clip on it so it holds um, and then it'll already be gathered up for you so there's always a way we can do these things even though we might have a little dexterity problem so I'm hoping so now you can see the size of it it's quite dinky and obviously you can increase the size of my patterns or decrease them entirely up to you. I can hear John now telling her off because <laughs> he must know I can hear. Yeah, so you can increase or decrease the patterns um, as you know, whatever you like. They're yours to play with, um, which is which is lovely. Right. So um, I've got all my. Um, camera set up so we're good to go just making sure we're okay on youtube as well oh we've got rose may as well we've got um grace and patsy and nicola and karen so welcome everybody it's just so lovely for you to join me on a yet another monday evening uh, in my workroom so let's just go to the overhead there i've got all my uh, fabrics ready to go I've got exactly the same fabrics as I used before. So what I might do is just change them a little bit and, and do different things on different layers. Um, what I found really nice was working with the same color tones, but you might want to, especially with this fabric, we've got a gorgeous red, you may want to put a red um, little um, puff on the top. So it's up to you at what you do, but I think whatever you make, it's gonna look absolutely gorgeous. Um, now these are all derived from Suffolk puffs. So if you know anything about Suffolk puffs or puffs or yo-yos, then you'll know. Um, I'm going to do raw edge, but you might want to fold the edges over, and I'll talk about that when we get to it. Now this, well, I had four blues. And then I had this one. It actually does have blue in it. So you might want to, like you, this is a, um, a layer cake. You might want to use one that has perhaps more of the tonal blue in it. But I could use this for the bottom one this time, which is exactly what I'll do. So I'll put those to one side. So you've got your five circles. You've got numbers on yours. These are my prototypes. And um, what I suggest you do is fold these into quarters, so into half and into a quarter, and give it a nice um, squidge. So you've got a nice sort of cone shape there, if you like. We'll pop that to, to one side so you can see. Let's just move my fabric. There we go. You can see what I'm doing. And you're going to do the same with your fabric. So you're going to fold it once, make sure that's going to fit. Yeah? And then you're going to fold it again. OK, so you might want to give that a finger press. Um, and I like to see my raw edge here. So I kind of fold this under um, so I can see my raw edges. And then I know exactly how it's going to fit. So that fits right on the top like that. I know I can see there that it's easily going to fit. Obviously, you can be more frugal than me if you like. Four in the morning, Sharon. Are you crazy? <laughs> Oh, and a special uh, mention to Elizabeth this evening. Um, Elizabeth, if you're watching this evening, um, welcome. I'm so pleased to be in your sitting room with you. Um, we talked about this earlier, and uh, I keep Elizabeth company, as some obviously I keep all, you all company, but a special, special hello to Elizabeth this evening. Right, so I've cut my first piece out. And you might find that the easiest way to cut all of your circles. So let's let's carry on and make them all. I'm just going to pick the next layer up and the next size. I'm ke keeping the one. I know you can't see, but I'm keeping them all in a row so I know exactly which, which ones I've used. So again, we're going to fold like that. Make sure it fits. Mine's, as I said, mine's quite generous. You might want to be a little bit less uh, less generous than me. But um, for demonstration purposes, it's always good to, to be err on the side of caution, I always say. So just fold your fabric into quarters like I just did. I showed you before. Your circle is folded into quarters. I Don't try to be so accurate. I know some of you will, and it's not a criticism. Um, but look, if you're just a little bit over or, you you know, your folds aren't quite straight, please don't worry. These will still gather up beautifully. So there's number two. Let's just get them so you can see them. And that's my second size done. I'll do that so you can see as well. So this is my third one. Actually, I'm going to use that for the top because it, it almost looks like a plane. 
So we'll use Father Christmas as our third one. So you can see I made the big one out of that one. So this is the third one folded up into quarters again. So I'm just going to fold, just check and make sure that it's going to fit. Oh gosh, easily. I could come back a little bit. Fold under. You might have your own way of doing this. And um, please share, please tell everybody how you do these sort of things. Because you know what? You've only got me telling you. And sometimes, you know, it's nice to have other people's opinions as well. Now you might want to pin these um, paper layers so they all sit nicely onto your fabric. So move that out the way. There's our third one done. And a, a lot of this is repetition, as you can see. So <laughs> there's our fourth one here. I love this little bit of fabric. Now, I don't know what this fabric is. I've had it quite some time. Um, I think I got it from Abigail a couple of years ago um, from Abbey Crafts. And um, uh, yeah, it was a layer cake. And um, like I say, it's come in very handy on lots of little projects. So again, try and fold that nice and neatly, <laughs> says she, knowing full well I haven't done it nice and neatly. There we go. And just cut around. So also, um, I'm going to say hello to all the ladies that I saw um, at the weekend. So on Friday at the Duxford Quilt Show and also on um, Saturday at my workshop at the Cozy Cabin. It was just lovely seeing you all and it was so lovely to hear that you all love making the mims. And people were stopping me <laughs> as I was going around the show. Um, saying how much they love doing the Making It Mondays and that that was pure joy to me, pure joy. So look, even that little tiny piece there, I'm going to pop it on there. And this is a lot quicker than pinning a circle onto your fabric and cutting round, I promise you. And you're not to worry about whether your circle ends up a little bit like an oval <laughs> or it is a circle. So there we are. So there's all our five pieces cut out. So hopefully, I'm going to keep keep my paper pieces because um, I might make a few of these. And um, the other thing you can do, let me bring this in. The other thing you can do is when you stuff yours, when you stuff, you're going to stuff the first four. You're not going to stuff that last one. And you'll see when we get there why. But you could add some essential oils to your little bit of toy stuffing. Um, or you could use scraps of fabrics or wadding. You know, just little pieces. And you could use essential oils. And so it starts to smell very Christmassy when you hang these little trees. Or you could even be a bell, couldn't it? From, uh, from your Christmas tree or wherever you want to hang them. From door handles, from window catches, wherever you like. They're so sweet. I think you want to, I think you'll probably want to make uh, quite a few, few of these. Okay, so that's our cutting out done. So um, what we'll do is we'll go to, I'll just go to the front camera just for a moment. So I've got all my pieces ready here to go. There we are, I can just about see them there. Now, like I said before, whack your stitch length up. Now my, my machine goes up to five millimeter. Well, sorry, six millimeter, which really is too, too long on some projects. These particularly, because they do end up quite small. So I've taken it down to five. So if you've got, um, stitch length of four to five it would be great um, it's absolutely perfect and we're only doing one row normally with gathering I'll always say to you do two rows I don't think we've done much gathering on a mim actually maybe I'll have to do some gathering um, <laughs> two rows is always good for gathering especially for clothing and things like that but for this project please only one row and of course you can hand stitch them if you want to so let's just go to the side camera again and hopefully we've got you uh, in view. I've got a different shot of the camera to, of the needle cam today. Oh, Caroline, peppermint oil. <gasps> that would be delicious. <laughs> My word, peppermint oil. I love peppermint. OK, so um, if you've got a machine like mine where it cuts the threads, um, can I suggest for this project that you don't cut the threads, that you keep your threads long? Um, for the first one, my 
starting thread is somewhere down there. Actually, I'm hoping I haven't run out of bobbin, so I can't see it. But my starting thread is somewhere down the hole. But for, for the purposes of quickness, I'm going to leave it as it is. So we're just going to work our way around about a quarter of an inch, sorry, about an eighth of an inch from the edge. Um, and we're going to be pulling the top thread. So not that it matters. To be perfectly honest, it doesn't matter. But um, you'll see as we get these done why the top thread, it works quite well. So we're just working our way around. And of course, you can pivot and turn if you feel you know, as we go down the sizes, you will end up pivoting and turning, I promise. <laughs> but you could, of course, hand stitch these. Use a really strong thread. So even an embroidery thread would be absolutely perfect. So there we are. We've gone all the way around and I'm literally going to use my thread cutter, something I very rarely do. So there's the first one. So let's carry on. Let's not uh, waste too much time. Again, starting right sides up, not that it matters. And I'm just going an eighth of an inch all the way around and just guiding my fabric. And as like I said, it won't, it won't, it'll, it won't, um, sorry, it'll get to the point where you are pivoting and turning. But this one, not so bad. Maybe the next one we will. Yeah, so this is your time to get out all those Christmas scraps. And really, you've seen <laughs> the size of the circles. So, you know, you you know that you're going to have just used scraps. So, um, Angela on YouTube is saying hello. Um, hello, and she's saying hello to everybody. Chrissy is from Athens in Georgia. She's saying hello on YouTube. And um, did you see today? I don't know if anybody saw it, but I've had two million views on my Facebook videos. My goodness, it doesn't mean I'm a multimillionaire, guys. I promise you, <laughs> it doesn't work like that. But uh, my goodness me, that's amazing, isn't it? Two million? Gosh, if we were to stack up, I don't know, two million Father Christmases. <laughs> Think how many that would, well, think how, how that would look. Okay, so now we're on number four. So now we're really going to have to sort of pivot and turn. Um, Rhonda's saying hi everybody from uh, YouTube. Um, Tina says that um, the very first Christmas ornaments she made 35 years ago were yo-yo Santas. Yay! <laughs> I'm going to try and keep my fingers out of the way. So somebody said to me the other day, wouldn't it be easier if you had a, a, um, a knee lift. Now this machine actually does come with a knee lift but I have never got on with it. <laughs> got on. And actually under my desk my legs are absolutely um, hemmed in. Let's put it that way. They're hemmed in. I haven't got room to swing my knee across <laughs> and, and cut the threads and to, quite honestly I don't know I've had so many years of just pivoting and turning so there's our fourth one. Now the fifth one, look, it's so tiny. So just be aware, maybe this is the one that you're going to hand stitch. Maybe this is the one that you're going to actually turn the stitch length down a little bit. So look, two couple of stitches, pivot and turn. So it might seem tedious, but I promise you, it's only a minute out of your life. I'm not asking you to do too much. <laughs> and yes, get your knee lift out. If you like your knee lift, get it out. <laughs> if you've got a machine that automatically lifts, use it. <laughs> Gosh, you know what? There's so many different ways of doing these type of things. Now, with a regular Suffolk puff, right, let's get the machine out of the way. I'll just keep you there for a moment. With, um, let's show you on this camera here. With a regular Suffolk puff, you normally would turn over a quarter an inch, um, of, sorry, um, 
a quarter inch like a hem I suppose so you're going you're just turning on the right side over to the back okay you're going to turn over a quarter of an inch and then you're going to stitch but look we're only making a Christmas tree decoration so if you want to go traditional and do the quarter inch under you go that but I, can I ask you to make your designs bigger because I promise you when you get down to this one you is going to struggle <laughs> so make them all a quarter inch bigger all the way around if you're going to do it the traditional way okay so let's just quickly go on the overhead because then you'll be able to see um, just the first few ones that I gather up because it, it gets a little tedious but I wanted to do it right from, right from the get-go so on the right side what I want you to do is just get my thread okay that's got caught but we'll see if we can just undo that just bear with me a moment I think we'll be okay I can't get hold of it I need my tweezers there we go so on the right side you want to pick up those top threads and the two underneath that are from your bobbin I doubt whether you'll see this because I've used cream thread but the two underneath I don't want you to touch okay they can go to one side and uh, right at the very end if you want to snip these um, down a little bit more then please do so from the top you're going to take those top two threads and you're just going to pull and as you pull of course it's going to gather and it's going it's easier if uh, you gather from the top because those are the ones that are going to be on the top of your puff and you'll get to a certain point where you can start adding a little bit of stuffing so just keep keep going keep going don't be too rough because you've only got one strand of thread okay just one strand I might actually zoom in a little bit so you can see a bit better okay so I'm happy with that I've got a little bit of a space there let me just zoom up uh, zoom up or even zoom down <laughs> or zoom in <laughs> let's just see if we can do that a little bit bear with sorry about the the view hold on that's it <clears throat> there's no easy way of doing that <laughs> so there we are that's what it looks like so um, I've got my long threads there now um, we're going to snip those threads because they're a little bit unmanageable like that so we're going to snip them so they're what I don't know two, two and a half inches long something like that and then I'm just going to put a teeny weeny bit of stuffing in there I don't want you to go mad with this I don't want them to end up being like so um, like balls I want them to be quite flat um, and when we actually um, stitch the bell through um, they go I want them to be squidgy but not not ridiculous <laughs> that doesn't help does it great great dis description okay so just keep gathering until you're happy and then you're getting the two long ends and again like I said to you if you have dexterity problems this might be your downfall okay this might be your downfall but I, what I want you to do is gather up as best you can and then use a little bit of glue and just hold that glue in place with a clip so just clip it or, or um, you perhaps even try pinning it and, um, and and holding it until the glue sets and then you'll be fine so there we are we can tuck our ends in there we can snip the ends away whatever pleases you okay whatever pleases you and then if you want to add more stuffing if you feel it needs it then add a bit more and puff them out and that's the sort of thing we're looking at so I'll do one more and then I'll come back to the front which is a teensy weensy bit more interesting so I'm taking the top two threads only there we go so I've got my top two threads only that you can see the other ones they're sort of tucked tuck them under there so that you can't you can't see them but there we are so if I pull that now and like I say be careful because it is only one strand of thread and it, they it, this will naturally want to curl up and uh, become a little circle and like I said before you know and somebody will I'm sure um, you know add to the comments about this if you were to do a traditional Suffolk puff or yo-yo I like to call them Suffolk puffs because I live in Suffolk so I figure I'm allowed um, then uh, you'll, you'll turn over that quarter inch so 
make a little they're like little mop caps aren't they take a little bit of stuffing so you can hardly see it a little bit of fluffy cloud there and pop it into the center of your circle your little hole that you've left and so you can see I don't want you to close these up and I think in the uh, in the pictures they look clear enough that they're not closed up in the middle there's no need but you need to bring them in a certain amount um, so you don't see the raw edges when you put them together so I'm happy with that yeah so I'm just going to snip my threads down to about two and a half inches so they're a little bit more manageable and of course if you need a finger to hold your knot like now <laughs> if we had another person here I'd be saying just shun your finger on there love but we haven't <laughs> so we do our best <laughs> to hold those gathers in place if they come under uh, under a little bit I'm not going to worry too much there we go and if you're not um, not confident that that's going to stay put <gasps> come on Lizzie then just do another knot okay and then you can tuck your threads inside or snip them off if you're confident your, your um, knot's going to stay put so there we are not too bad I would like to have had that a little bit tighter but I don't have a third finger <laughs> but I suppose actually you could use a quilting clip again as long as we've got the right effect we'll be fine so there's our two of them done so let's go on to the third I'll do the third and then I'll come to to the front just for a moment while I do the others um, there's no, they're no different except that they're just smaller. So um, again, top two threads, get those bottom ones out of the way. Let me get the right ones. Get the bottom ones out of the way. You're just pulling the top. And like I said before, they, they just naturally want to make a little puff. Take your ends in, keep everything as neat as you can. And so the time consuming bit is probably this bit. Um, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you. It, it might take a little while, but it's so fun. So just a tiny little bit of stuffing for this one. There we go. Like I said, I don't want great big sort of footballs. <laughs> I just want nice flat discs. I suppose they're not, um, they're not too thick. Look, if I do it like that, you'll see. If I was to squidge it, I'd say, well, actually, they probably squidge down to a quarter of an inch. So again. Let's cut the tails and do our first knot like that. And I suppose we could put a quilting clip there. I'm not sure I'm clever enough to do all of that all in, in one go. Reach over, keep my knot there. So we'll just kind of go for it. I'm going to put my finger on there as best I can. Loop it through. Don't think I did that. Loop it through. Loop it through. <laughs> <laughs> and pull that tight and like I said if you're not sure if you've pulled that tight enough then do a third one because you don't want your tree um, coming undone so let's just do that okay good and like I say tie, uh, tuck your tuck your ends in or cut them off if you're confident <clears throat> if you're not um, confident your knot will stay then keep them because um, you might have to retie them but there we are. You will do as you're told. There. So we've made our, our third one there. I love the Christmas. He's a bit cute, isn't he? <laughs> so what we'll do is we'll go to the front camera just to finish the, the other two off because just the same. So just get those bottom threads out the way. And we're just pulling the top threads. Like I say, um, maybe using embroidery thread and hand stitching maybe that's better for you because it's a thicker thread so think about all your different options that you can do there's only so many different options I can cover or even think about in a week when I put the patterns together tiny little bit of stuffing roll it up into a ball pop it into the center draw your threads up and then tie your knot and obviously the smaller these get the more tricky now I am going to reach over and get a clip and just 
try and hold that together. That's it. Just while I tie this knot. So, and it is easier to cut your threads down to about two and a half inches. I know I keep repeating the same stuff, but if you missed it the first time, if you weren't quite listening or you, you were asking the dog to stop barking or whatever it is, then um, I repeat it so you, you, you know for sure. So the Making It Monday patterns are available on my website, lizzycurtis.com. If you go to the shop and, and do the drop down, you'll see MIM patterns. And that's where you'll find 49 now patterns, 50 with Prinny, um, to, for you to download and, and use as you wish. All I ask is that you don't um, just copy and share them out to somebody else. Get them to go to the website. Um, they really are very, very inexpensive. And a special um, notice as well, next week we have a special um, uh, Making It Monday project, uh, it re very, very special, and um, that one is not going to be free. So if, you're, if, you're, if you go to the Making It Monday section next Monday, um, there'll be a special pattern, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but I'll let it be a surprise. Um, it's been made by our lovely Gemma. And, but it's not going to be free. All of the monies raised from selling the Making It Monday project for next week is going to a special cause. Again, I'm not going to tell you what it is until, uh, until the day, so until next Monday. Um, so I wanted you to be aware of that because I didn't want to have hundreds and hundreds of messages saying, but it's not free, it's not free, it's not free. Um, I'll put a little notice on there to say that it's not free. Um, you know, I'll try to make it as clear as I possibly can. Um, but I, I, you know, I just, um, it's a special cause, a special cause. We're raising money for a very, very special um, uh, purpose. Okay, so just a word of warning there. So you know, and you're not taken by surprise next week. And that'd be lovely if you could support uh, what we're going to be doing. It's like I say, it's something very special. So with that little one made, it's tiny. <laughs> Just try and tuck all your threads in, try and make it as neat as you possibly can. Cut them and snip them and try to, you know, if you want to pop a little bit of glue on there just to make sure you hold it. Um, probably easier to glue it um, uh, when you finish stitching because I don't want your glue to be on your needle or anything now this little last one It's a little bit like a little hat. It's not stuffed you, If you want to stuff it you stuff it, but it's not stuffed. It's just like a little flat button on top of the tree um, Oh Nicola says how fab I'm sure we'll raise lots of money for special cause whatever it is Especially the amount of free making it Mondays. We have Oh, thank you Nicola um, Rhonda says, great, uh, great idea to donate to a special cause. Good job, Gemma and Lizzie uh, and gang. Can't wait. Thank you, Rhonda. Thank you for your support. It really is appreciated. You've no idea. It really is appreciated. Um, and, I, and I really do um, love it. I love it, love it, love it. So let's go on the overhead again because we're going to put the tree together. So let's just get you uh, on the overhead there. So we've got all of our lovely little puffs ready to go. And of course, the first thing we need to do is to actually attach the bell. So I've got my embroidery thread and I've got all six skein, six skeins? Yeah, it is, isn't it? Six threads to, it is a skein. I'm saying that and I'm doubting myself. Anyway, it's six threads, okay? I haven't separated them at all. I'll need this to be really super strong. So put a lovely, lovely strong knot on, on the end of your thread and do this sort of do a couple of knots hopefully so they sit on top of each other and um, so it's a really that's better so it's a really strong knot right you can see the size of it great lumpy knot but you don't want it to go through your fabric so we're coming this is the top of the puff look this is the biggest one I've tried to put them in a row little ducks in a row there we go Still no better. Let's try and do it that way. Um, and you're going from the fluffy side, from the wrong side, from the, the stitch side. I can't remember what I said on the pattern, but this side where you can see the puff through to the bottom. Okay. And if you've got a really long needle, then that's even better. And I'm just going to move those out of the way for the moment. So that's the bottom of our tree. So I'm looking at this bit with the bell. Okay. So now then this is where I had an idea 
so bear with me. So I've got three different size bells and I've also got a bead. Now I know my needle can't get through this bead, but the idea was that I would I want to I wanted to show you that you could if you wanted to put a bead on there. Now um, obviously that that bead it would look gorgeous hanging. So what I can't do is go through and then come back because I'm gonna I'm, I would have to loop it on here or I would go through and maybe put something uh, like a sequin on the bottom of there so I could just literally um, have a well, like a little button maybe so I could go into a second hole and take it through but I wanted you to see what it would look like if, like if we put a bead on there but like I say um, my needle um, is not isn't I know it's look it's not going to go through that bead but you might have a beading needle so go through the bead I like a th I think a, a little button would be nice so through the bead out thread it through a button come back on yourself and go through your hole to come up through your tree I think that would look absolutely glorious on the bottom of your little tree and when you've got special beads like these <laughs> then please use them we have got a really really big bell and there's no reason at all I don't think I can get this to ring there you go. <laughs> there's no reason at all why you can't have a really big bell on the bottom why not go big or go home um, I've also got in my stash which I I forgot about and then I just remember when I saw it when I got my clip I've got some rusty bells so if you wanted to do it sort of oldie worldy get some rusty bells yeah I've got the medium one which is what I used on the one that I made which is that one and I've got a little teeny tiny one so I don't want the teeny tiny one I, I, get, I like to go biggish so let's just move out those out of the way so we've brought our thread through and then we're going through the loop of the bell the, the back little loop of the bell that's the best way to say it um, which allows me then to go back through my um, puff now when you get to this stage obviously it's it's fairly well secure but we are going to come back on that just to make sure so there's my bell the rusty bell looks like a tree stump Emma oh my gosh you're so right so this is our second one so I'm just literally going through the center of that okay and then I'm going through the center of the third one and if you wanted to, you could glue all these layers together. There's nothing to stop you doing that. And you've then got the first three little puffs secured. And then on the fourth one, there we are, let me get it so you can see. You can see the little fluffy bits, yeah? I think my camera's at a funny angle. See all the fluffy bits there? This one, you're going to put fluffy bit down. So you're going to have the nice top showing, okay? And actually, I really could do with um, tightening up my um, gathers, but I'm I'm just going to ignore it. So I'm going to I'm now looking at my nice side, my 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 pretty side. Let me just snip that. It brought a thread through. <sighs> so. That one is going to be a pretty side. Yeah, you happy? You know what I'm talking about? It looks like it's had a hard day. It's all sort of lopped over to one side. Um, <laughs> feels like it's had one cherry too many. So there we are. And then on the top one as well, we want it pretty side up. So again, go through the, the center like that and go pretty side up and it, like I said to you before if you want to put a little bit of puff in the top of that you know if you want to put some little um, stuffing in there please do so no rules no rules not not when we come to making it Mondays okay so now we've got to this stage what I want to do now is to take all that through that thread through to the bottom again so if you've got a nice long needle a thimble as well you're taking it from the top all the way through to the bottom okay like that and that's where 
you can get that lo lovely little sort of puffy look at the top. I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of, it goes wrinkly at the top look. Go through your bell again. So you're really securing your bell. So if you've got a pussycat that would li love to play with this, you're making it fairly safe, I think. I don't have a cat, so don't uh, don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> and then you're coming back up again to the top. Okay, and try and do that as neatly as you can. There we go. Don't squidge them too much. I mean, I'll give that a little bit of a, a wriggle. Now, obviously, you're going to do a little bit better of a job of, um, of the gathers than me. <laughs> but look, that's how it looks. So our bell is now really fixed re really well on the bottom there and it's kind of made the bottom nice and puffy as well which is great. Really, You get a really nice shape with this. Now we need to do the loop. Okay so the loop is here. All right so to make the loop you're going to go back into that top one and you're going to come out at the side Okay, so can you see what I'm doing? Just going to go through the side. And you're going to make your loop. So you decide. Maybe it's, I don't know, that two inches is that? So it'd be a four inch altogether. It's a bit twisted. There we go. So there's, there's the loop made. Yeah, can you see that okay? And what you can do is you can, if you wanted to, come back up through. This is all about now securing your thread. Because we, we've made it, haven't we? We've made the whole thing. But I want you to secure the thread. So just come up, go back through again, just on that first layer. You don't need to go right through to the bottom. Tuck that under. And then what I want you to do, let me just get this little loop out of the way. You'll find this easier at home when you come to make it. I just want you to wrap that round two or three times and then snip. Now, there's a great possibility that that could come undone because all we've done is is twisted it round. So get a little bit of textile glue or, or PVA, anything will do. But textile glue is made for the purpose. Tiny little squidge, and I mean tiny. <laughs> this is just a Colel textile glue. There we go. Any anyone will do. I've got several different sorts. Um, that's another one. That's a Colel. I do I do like these Colel textile glues but there's loads on the market so go and have a search go and have a search and that will that will secure the end so that will secure the end of your your um your thread and i would just leave it overnight just to make sure it's set my my thread is really twisted but let's just try and untwist it so you can see what it looks like there we go so there's our little tree made and there's the bell let me do that one can you hear? <laughs> so I think you'll have fun making those and I think you could get the children to make them it looks like a cake that's had a bad time in the oven doesn't it <laughs> and uh, yeah I think the children can get involved with these and really start making quite a few so if we put this on the tree so let's just go to the side camera so we can see, bear, oh, wrong, wrong mouse, just bear with me a second. Um, so if I go to the side camera and I bring my, my tree decoration in, got a, little, got a little felt tree here that I made a couple of years ago. Oh, oh you can't see it. Let's pop it. Let's pop it there. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> okay. And then we can hang them up. Um, and twist it. There we go. I want, I want to do it so you can see. There's one. Pop it there. Yeah. And then the other one. So make sure you can see it. Pop it there. Hey, that's lovely, isn't it? Looks really sweet. I feel quite festive now. There we go. What kind of spray fabric glue do you use? Not for this mim. Oh, okay, Donna. Oh, is that um, Darcy? Oh, it's Darcy. Um, well, 505 for temporary spray is perfectly fine. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd recommend 505. Yeah, just Google it.
right, so there we are. So there is our lovely little Christmas tree decorations. Aren't they sweet? They actually look, actually, hey, they make perfect earrings. Just a minute. Oops, there we go. What do you think? <laughs> maybe, maybe a bit big. So there we are. So there's our Making It Monday 49. It's uh, our Christmas tree decoration called All Puffed Up. Now you know why it's called All Puffed Up. And uh, I hope you're going to make a few of these. Get the children making them. Perhaps they can do the knots, especially if they've got a second person with a finger and they can hold the uh, threads in place. So, yeah, so we're just under the hour, which is fantastic. I knew it would be because it's a nice, simple little make. As I said, next week is going to be something really super duper special. Um, it's going to be um, chargeable as well. So please don't be surprised by that. Um, and don't uh, don't ask me why it's not free. <laughs> I shall say, did you not watch the live uh, last week? <laughs> So um, so thank you very much for watching. Thank you very, very much for supporting me. And um, thank you very much if you're on YouTube and got me to um, 2 million views. How crazy is that? How did that happen? Um, although I must admit, I looked at my foreseen purse today and that was up to 176,000 views. So I suspect that that has contributed to the amount of views I've had, which is incredible, really. Yeah, mind blowing. All right. Well, I hope you have a lovely super duper week and um, I'll see you all again um, next Monday. Um, if you're in the gold group, I shall see you Thursday with our special guest, Hayley West. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, so if you're in the gold group, please um, join me uh, with uh, with myself and Hayley. We'll be talking all things sewing. If you're in the Making It Monday group, then um, please watch me again next week on uh, the Lizzie Curtis page. And I'll see you all again soon. Oh, and don't forget to buy your ticket for the 5th of December. Uh, all the details are in the events uh, at the top of your page. All right, I'll see you all again next Monday. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a lovely evening. Bye.